Welcome back. It's time for part four. We are finally going to electroform something. It's the part you've all been waiting for. So if you're new here and you want to start to learn how to electroform, then start up here. And if you have been following along but have not made something to electroform, then start up here. In the last video, we have made something to electroform. I made this little pendant which is now covered in latex and painted with conductive paint and it is all ready to go into into the electroforming bath. So what does electroform let you do? Well, basically it lets you coat anything in copper. So for example, I made this little mushroom piece with a tree agate and this is epoxy sculpt and a crystal and I have coated it in a nice thick layer of copper. So how does this process actually work? Well, I'm going to explain everything behind it today. So electroforming is the process of depositing copper ions onto anything that has a conductive surface. This can be metal or anything that you have painted with conductive paint. So you can electroform things such as leaves, organics, pieces of plastic, 3D resin prints, anything like that, simply by just painting it in something conductive. And if you need a conductive paint recipe, if you do not have your own, Check it out up here. I have a video that shows you how to make a very easy two-step conductive paint. So electroforming happens when you have an anode and a cathode placed inside an electrolytic bath and a direct current of electricity is passed through from the anode to the cathode, thereby depositing the copper ions onto your cathode. And this works by using this little power supply right here behind me. So I have two setups. I have a large setup and a mini setup and we're going to be using the mini beaker setup today since we are just doing one singular piece and I don't feel like pouring out you know several gallons of solution into the large bath right now. So the process is pretty simple. You have these alligator cl clips. You have a red and a black one. Now your red gets hooked up to your anode. Your anode is going to be the copper coil that's on the inside. And then your cathode will, is, going to, is going to be suspended from your suspension bar, which in this case, I'm using a chopstick. I'm gonna hook a 26 gauge copper wire onto the chopstick. So that will make, that'll give me like a little hook, something to hook my piece from. And that will suspend it inside the solution right in the middle of my beaker. So when it comes to your all alligator clip placement, you're gonna use the red alligator clip will go onto the anode and then the black one onto the cathode and I usually just clip it right over top of the place where I have my uh, 26 gauge wire wrapped up over the chopstick. So very simple, very simple setup. And then you turn your power supply on. Now the most difficult part of electrifying for some people can be how high to set your amps at. So there is a rule and it requires a little bit of math. You want to set your power supply to 0.1 amp per square inch. Which seems very simple, right? And this is where a lot of people struggle sometimes because now you have to figure out how many square inches your piece is and measure it. And it's very difficult when you have a design that doesn't quite fit into any typical shape. So in this case, you wanna break it up into geometric shapes. This one's very difficult to actually break up into geometric shapes. So I would probably almost assume like a cube or a cone, but some designs you can break up into a cylinder with a triangle with a cone on top or a cube and you get a rough estimate. So when it comes to your power, you don't have to be exact. So this is something that as you are electroforming over time, you'll find out how much power you really need and you'll get an almost instinctive feel for it. And I found that as I electroform more often, I don't really have to do the math because I know roughly for this many pieces, I might have to use this many amps when the pieces are this size. So if I have, you know, three or four small rings I'm electroforming, I'm gonna use a very, very small amount, maybe, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 amps. If I'm doing a batch of say 10 very large pendants, I might be, you know, at 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20 amps. It, it all depends. So when you are trying to figure out the math behind us, take your piece, sometimes you can even redraw a piece of paper and separate it into shapes. So how do you calculate how many amps you need for your pieces? So you need 0.1 amps per square inch. So the easiest way to do that is to take your design and break it down into shapes. Break it down into cubes or even cylinders. Maybe you have a cone on top of your cylinder, pyramids. Basically, you're looking at geometric shapes and breaking your design down into them. Spheres, obviously that's a big common one is spheres. Ignore my crappy drawings. So my piece is already in the solution, so I've kind of gave a quick example with my piece, but for example, something like this, where it's a little bit more complex, 
how would you calculate the amps per square inch for this? In this case, say you did it almost as if it was a sphere and then a slightly smaller sphere on the inside. I would basically calculate this whole thing as a sphere and then a slightly smaller one, which would give me a kind of rough estimate. So we're gonna enter the value of the radius. So let's take the ruler. So it's about three inches, so 1.5 inches. So let's do 1.5 as the radius and I'm using a calculator. So the area of the sphere would be overall would be 28. Now if I just do this little inside portion which would be one inch so 12 that would be 12 so, uh, square inches. So now what I'm looking at my calculator 28 minus 12 that gives me 16 square inches which for something like this, with my experience, I would say 16 is kind of okay. It'd probably be do I'd probably do like 1.12 uh, or 0.13. Something larger like this piece is definitely a lot more complex to figure out how much how many amps to use. So in this case, this is where I would use a cylinder for this portion. But I'd probably just use a cylinder and then do a almost like a sphere on top. There is a lot of surface area with the design details that I have on this piece. But in this case also, I know that something that's bigger like this, I tend to use, for my for myself, I usually use somewhere between 0.15 to 0.18 amps. And that usually electroforms just fine. So again, it's also the process of knowing for your, for what you're making, roughly how much you're using that works really well. So use the calculation, but eventually get comfortable enough that you'll almost instinctively know without needing to do the calculation anymore. But in the beginning, the easiest way to do it, break it down to geometric shapes and use an online surface area calculator and then roughly measure with a ruler the rough shot size of your piece so you can kind of figure out what you really need. In my case, I think I'm just going to go very simply and assume it's going to be a cube. They Realistically, if you put it all together, it probably is kind of cube-like. And I will link a surface area calculator down in the description just to make it easier for those who are math challenged as I am because I don't like math. So now we're going to set up our workstation. So it's pretty simple. First, get your solution, pour it into your little setup. So in this case, I am just going to be using my mini beaker setup. So we're gonna pour it right into here. The nice part is that just one bottle of the solution fits into my beaker perfectly. Okay, so now when you're electroforming, you do want to be in an area that's about 65 degrees or warmer. In the winter, you can think you can use things like a hot plate, and a lot of people do use a hot plate or the hot plate that has a magnetic stir option too, because they use the magnetic stir to agitate the solution. Now personally, I don't use any of that, and I have never used any of that, so I just stick to the good old fashioned, hopefully my warm, my room is warm enough. When I used to electroform on my enclosed front porch, I had to have a heater set up out there because it was so cold and it was definitely not 65 degrees. The electroforming worked pretty decently, so I don't know if the temperature is necessarily a requirement, but it probably does help. Okay, now let's set our alligator clips up. Red one goes on my anode. When it comes to suspension wire, I use this 26 gauge thin wire. Now this is to show you the example because this is all I have left in my previous one, but I'm gonna use this. So I take it and I just wrap it around my suspension bar. Okay, piece, you just wanna kinda measure it. How many square inches? So I got about 15 square inches, which I would probably say is not wrong given the complexity of the design. I might actually start a little lower, do like 1.2 amps and then bump it up if it's not electroforming fast enough. So that just, the calculations are simple. And as you know, for a piece like this, I think I use about a little over 1.1 amps. That's just because I know my setup. So since I use 26 gauge wire, it's very thin. It doesn't always hook, so I just make a little suspension piece out of it like this. And we're gonna dip it in the solution. So your piece should be suspended directly in the middle and not touching any of the anode or the bottom or the glass or anything. So just free floating. Okay, so your power supply should be plugged in. Take your black alligator clip and I'm going to connect it to the suspension wire here. So turn on the power supply. Now sometimes the numbers, uh, the voltage fluctuates a little bit 
but you usually the numbers will go to zero. So you want to start when your numbers are at zero. And usually before you turn on your power supply, you want to make sure your knobs, so your amperage knobs are turned all the way counterclockwise. So they should be turned all the way counterclockwise, so you're turning them this way. And then your voltage is turned all the way up clockwise. So they should both be at extremes. So you have a coarse and a fine on this power supply. Coarse gives you a larger adjustment, fine is a very fine adjustment. So self-explanatory, very easy. So now that I have it connected, I'll do a coarse adjustment first to try to see if I can get it to jump up to where I want it to be. Oop, too high. Okay, I'm at 0.7, so now I can use the fine to kind of get it a little closer to where I want to be. So let's do... It keeps jumping. Okay, did the course a little higher. And trying to get it down. Now we are just going to leave it here. So it's electroforming. Typically, people electroform things from between 4 to up to 36 hours, sometimes even more for larger things. Something like this, I'm going to electroform for, let's say... 24 hours so we'll get a good plate so tomorrow at this time I'll come back and finish up this video but what you want to do in the very beginning is also check in on your piece so you might want to check after an hour see if copper is starting to form what it looks like what the plating looks like is it brittle or is it good and especially in the beginning when you're kind of monitoring your pieces you'll know if you want to turn up your amps or not some people start with a bit of a higher amperage to kind of get that initial plate and then slow it down yeah and you definitely want to give your jewelry a good amount of time in the bath so that it does build up that good solid copper foundation especially with when you have like pieces that are glued on like if you are gluing shanks onto rings or little thin fragile jump rings and allow them to have time to build up that copper. So this is partially why I use epoxy sculpt because I don't use glue so I think epoxy sculpt gives a little bit more structural integrity versus glue which can fall off unless you have a very good solid copper plate on there. And checking in on your piece too, and you'll be able to see if you are getting any weird funky textures or anything, so you want to keep doing that too. So we'll be back in a little bit to see how the plate is forming, um, but I can already hear the current going. And just something interesting I already noticed, you can see bubbles on the piece. So now the bubbles are on the suspension wire, so that's not a big deal. Now, if there are bubbles on your piece, that will prevent your piece from electroforming. So, you definitely want to make sure that you shake off any bubbles if there's anything going on. Okay, it's the next day. So now we are going to see what the electroform piece came out. I did get quite sick overnight, so if I sound nasally or a little weird, that's why. But since electroforming is a process, I can't really put on pause until I'm better. Um, we're just going to finish filming this video while I'm sick. But anyway, the piece is done electroforming now. I'm going to take it out of the bath and show you what it looks like. And let's see what kind of result we got. So it has been electroforming almost exactly 24 hours. So you'll see the kind of coating you get after 24 hours, which is how long I typically leave most of my pieces. When you remove your electroform piece from the solution, you want to rinse it off. So you want to use either distilled water, if you might potentially have to put it back into the solution, or if you're definitely done, you can just use tap water, which is fine. If you use tap water that has like different, that can have different minerals and things that can slightly mess with your solution chemistry. So that's why you usually want to use distilled water if you're putting it back in. I am going to throw some gloves on just so I don't get the solution on myself. Disconnect your alligator clips. So I'm going to disconnect this and let's see what it looks like. It looks like we got some overgrowth actually. So we have a very nice texture, very nice and shiny. Let's dip it in. So I'm just rinsing, rinsing it off in a cup of water. I actually got a very cool texture on this piece and I actually really like it. I might, I might put this up to sell. So that's what the piece looks like. It actually came out really neat. It's nice, shiny. So as you can see, this piece came out really neat. It does have some very interesting growth 
which is probably from the amps. I might have had them a little too high, but I did turn them up after the initial like hour or two, so it's a really cool effect. I'm pretty happy with the effect. I think it came out neat. I may actually throw this up in the shop, so we'll see. The next video is going to be how I polish this, patina it, and seal it so you can see how everything is going to look in the end. So hopefully if you've been following along, you should have your very first electroformed piece right now. So whether it's a piece of jewelry or a 3D print or whatever you're doing, you should have something that is electroformed and coated in copper. Hopefully everything has worked for you. If you want to see the next steps on what I do to turn this into a finished piece of jewelry, don't forget to click that like button, hit the subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you at the next one.